in the next half hour, the Indian spacecraft Chandrayaan-3 is attempting to become the first to land on the moon's south pole. If successful, it is hoped the lunar south pole could serve as a future base on the moon due to the presence of water ice that allows astronauts and scientists to work there for extended periods of time. They're also saying it could even provide an insight into past lunar volcanoes, maybe even the origins of our own oceans here on Earth. Well, let's get the thoughts now and views of space and planetary scientist Andy Lowndes, who can join us once more. Andy, thanks for your time. Um, it is a bit of a sort of uh, nail-biter because the Russians failed. Indeed, the Indians failed their last attempt back in 2019. Yes, thank you for having me. Yes, indeed, this is the this is the exciting part of space science, as we say. You know, it's got it's seventeen minutes to drop from orbit down to the surface of of the moon, uh, dropping from about six thousand kilometers an hour to to just a, a couple of kilometers an hour to actually soft soft land. That is the nerve wracking thing, and of course beautiful thing about it is there's nothing they can do about it. It's an onboard system that will try to land the spacecraft. And it is a very important mission, this one, for a couple of reasons. One, one of course, India are part of the Artemis program, the International Consortium going to the moon, where they hope to build a base in the South Polar region. And also, of course, the fact that India itself wants to show and demonstrate its own capabilities of technology, technology which, of course, can filter back into their own domestic uh, operations. And of course, it is by no means uh, guaranteed that this this landing is going to to be successful. Just explain to us why it is so difficult. Yes, first of all, you landing in the polar region, which is very different from landing in the equatorial regions, because you've got to get yourself into a very different orbit, which means it's a it's a lot more, uh, if you say, a contorted way of getting into orbit. So that in itself is difficult. When you're dropping a spacecraft down onto the surface of another world, uh, what it is is a controlled crash. So you have your, here's a demonstration piece here, a spacecraft, and when it's actually falling, you just let it fall, essentially, and allow gravity to pull you down, which is why you're traveling at great speed. Thrusters underneath it then fire to sort of cushion you as you're starting to drop. And that timing must be right to reduce your speed as you drop. Because you're not just falling straight down, you have other movement as well. So it's a, an angled fall, and all that has to be compensated for as you're dropping down. And as you're falling down, you've got to monitor the surface, and the spacecraft and computer systems will actually do that to see that you're not landing, for instance, in a boulder region or on top of the edge of a crater because the spacecraft will topple over and yeah. fall. It's got to try and find the flattest area possible. And, and I, I was making the point earlier, of course, that when we go back to July 1969, it was Neil Armstrong that took over the controls and went further, went long, because he saw a boulder the size of a Volkswagen. How quickly can they do that if they're doing everything by remote control? They can't. This is up to the spacecraft. Ah, <laughs> this right. is why they're so nerves, nerve-wracking. AI technology is in place to try to de deal with this. The, the failure of uh, Chandrayaan, Two uh, was a software glitch which caused the problem, and they've corrected that now. They've made some adjustments and alterations of the design, uh, which hopefully should should correct that problem. Um, and that's that's one of the beauties you have of a human on board, as you absolutely rightly said. Neil Armstrong saw a problem, immediately took over manual control, <clears throat> and with the help of Buzz Aldrin, who was calling out altitude and fuel capability uh, and fuel allowance. He was able, therefore, to, to manually guide the vehicle in, quite staggering, really, with less than 20 seconds of fuel left. You can't do that here. They're, it's automatic. The scientists and engineers have just got to sit there and watch. That is absolutely terrifying. But it's the only way really you're going to do this if you're going to do these kind of things in the future. <laughs>